Hello, viewer, and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV, where you look and live. And we always do our very best here to bring to you persons who are changing our community, impacting our communities in the direction of light and by the power of God. And thank you always for your support. We appreciate. And on this program of Spotlight, we are glad to be joined by, yes, a Catholic priest, his name, Reverend Father Charles Kenua. Now, Reverend Father Charles Kenua is a social media person, runs an entire congregation called the Father Kenua Online Congregation on Facebook and, of course, on other platforms. And it's just an amazing story because he has reached millions of people in this world and for the Kenya. Yes, please. Welcome. Thank you. Thank we, you. We are happy to have you. I'm humbled. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, happy, happy to have you. You're doing an amazing work. I always say it is for the greater glory of God. Oh, amen. Yeah, whatever and it is that I do, yes. for the greater glory of God. Good. And for the Kenya comes to us from the Archdiocese of Nyeri, yeah. and we are happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, so I have known you through your work on Facebook, okay. and uh, I have followed your masses, uh -huh. I have followed your devotionals, uh -huh. and I even experimented to see if the number there works, uh -huh. <laughs> and the number that is, you know sometimes people just put a number there, it but it true. doesn't work, it's it like a true. dead number, it's true. but within the same hour, I got a response, <laughs> and that, that, that's how I knew that it's a real church. Yeah. So welcome to Spotlight. Thank you, thank you so and much. And I'm sure our viewers would want to know, first and foremost, before even we go to your online ministry, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, how you got your interest or your call to priesthood. And many people think priesthood is pretty unique, especially <laughs> because you move away from the family line and dedicate your entire life yeah. to God. How did you, how, what's the story there? Let me first say that uh, I'm born from a very normal family as you and I and the other person. Uh, from a family of 10, seven brothers and three sisters. Uh, mom has rested two years ago. My dad is there, 81 years old. So, and uh, I come from Kieni. Kieni mm -hmm. is a pretty dry place. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that's where I was born. When I was in class six, I, I would say I had a revelation, like a dream, uh, that I wanted to become a priest. I, I was motivated by a certain priest who was working in our, in our parish, mm -hmm. uh, an engineer, a structural engineer, by then Father Caro. So I would see him over the week, over the week and then he's coming, doing the construction. On Sunday, he comes the, uh, with an old Mazda, and then a bit Maz, and then I felt that this is good. So which part, which part of the priest did you like? The engineering part? Or the Mazda priest the, part. In fact, <laughs> I, in fact, this is what I, I told myself. Uh -huh. I want to be a priest uh -huh. who can do more than just celebrate mass. Okay, all right. Okay. Somebody who mm -hmm. can be able to impact the life of people, mm -hmm. um, help families realize the reason for which they were put on earth mm -hmm. by God, mm -hmm. and somebody, of course, who directs souls to Christ. Okay. Mm -hmm. Around when I was in class seven, going to class eight. Um, again, I ha now that I, my, my vision was a bit clearer, mm -hmm. I would see that I, I am a priest and I'm talking to people that I cannot see. I would see that I'm preaching, the message is going, but the audience is not there. Mm -hmm. Now, in retrospect, later then I would say that maybe God was preparing me to, do, to be um, an online minister, which I started quite some time. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I finished. I went to high, to, to high school. But just before you go there, yeah. at that time, there was no, there was, there were no platform. There was social only th the, yeah. the only thing that I used mm -hmm. to hear then is Biblia Husema, something mm -hmm. like that. The only, the only gospel on radio was something like that. Mm -hmm. TV and things, there was, not, there was no Facebook, there was no WhatsApp, there was no Instagram, there was nothing. And here but you I, are, you've got a vision now. But I something now. very clear that mm -hmm. I'm preaching, but I can't see people. But I'm preaching to people. I am I'm really preaching mm -hmm. with a lot, of, a lot of oof. But I can't see anybody. And you know, <laughs> I think then uh, when, you, uh, when you look at the, you, the social media, yeah. in line, when you interpret it in line with your vision then, exactly. then you see it as a space 
uh, that God actually knew way before exactly. uh, and prepared people to come into it. Because mm -hmm. I sit right now, I sit, I give a prayer, and I'm praying with uh, maybe like today, I know I'm praying with like 50,000 people. I can't see them, but they have, they have listened to my prayer, they have listened to me. Mm -hmm. So I have prayed with them, I have prayed for them, I have blessed them, mm -hmm. but I can't see them. Now I look back, I say, okay, this is what God meant. And I think that that's a very important insight, especially yeah. for ministers exactly. who struggle yeah. with being in social media uh -huh. and who think it's still a worldly space. But we'll come so, to that. We'll come to that. We'll come to that Take yes. us through your, uh, you are now in high school. And after that, mm -hmm. I went to high school. Mm -hmm. And I went to a Protestant high school, meaning there, that, there, that uh, being a Catholic, I, there was no much big space where I could be a Catholic that I would, want, I would have wanted to be. But we had an excellent, excellent uh, principal called Mr. Kehoria, may he rest in peace. Mm -hmm. A great man, he was a de a, an archdeacon in ACK church. And he was a great man of God, great man of God. And uh, he molded me so much because I was also the school catechist, right from uh, um, Form 1. We, I worked. And after the four years, still I'm following my vocation. There is no one time mm -hmm. I doubted that I'll be a priest, even one day. That's amazing. <laughs> you know? It's amazing that the call of God is so, sometimes so persistent Very. and uh, so clear. For some, but for it some, is, it's rather not yeah. so clear. See, we yes. all, uh, just uh, as we are unique human beings, mm -hmm. we all have unique journeys. The best thing is to always allow God to guide our journeys. I always say that uh, if it is God writing my story, it doesn't matter who is holding the eraser. Mm -hmm. mm. Because he write, nevertheless. Mm -hmm. You keep writing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is how we, we miss the journey when we have forgotten who is writing the story. We, we focus on the eraser than the pen that is writing. Mm -hmm. uh, when Peter focused on Jesus, he was able to walk on water. The moment he changed the gaze to the storm, he started sinking. The reason why some quite a good number of ministers are sinking is because their attention is different. Mm -hmm. They are thinking of the online bullies, and they are there in their numbers, and they are there for a purpose. But if you went online to go and minister, to go and evangelize, your focus is Jesus, okay. not bullies. You need not think about the eraser, right? <laughs> now, um, again, just staying with pri priesthood mm -hmm. before you go to your church, mm -hmm. online church, online ministry, um, your ups and downs, you know, I know that your calling was clear uh, and yeah. everything, your vision yeah. very clear, but mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. maybe you can tell uh, our viewers uh, what are some of the ups and downs of being a priest? Yeah. First is the expectations. Uh, we still have quite a good number of uh, Christians or the people out there who have never known that priests are human beings. And I remember when I lost my mom. Mm. My mom was my best friend. Mm. And I remember people calling me, I, you know, I, and I have so many friends. They told me that, Father, Father, please remember that you are the one who is holding the family, the family is looking up to you, you see, you should not cry. But I would tell them that, uh, to my mom, I was not a priest. I'm a son. Mm. So I am mourning my mom. So I, I would see mm. that now they, they think, because Father, Father CK is a priest, he should not mourn, he should not cry, he should not be sad, mm -hmm. he should be able to comfort others, but I needed to be comforted. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 that amongst many others, people's expectations. And uh, number three, of course, there are some personal struggles because you are trying to do your best. Sometimes you are misunderstood, which is quite very normal. Um, amongst many, many other things. Okay. You know, and my, uh, the viewers would definitely want me to ask this one. Yes, please. Um, do you sometimes question your call and maybe feel, did I make the right decision? You know, did, me... I, did I, um, am I missing out on a lot? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I keep telling people, and this comes from, from the depth of my heart, if there is one happy priest... It is for the CK. Smiley one, yes, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, if there's somebody who loves his priesthood, 
It mm. is me. Mm. And number three, if I was to start all over again, I would choose to be a Catholic priest. Wow. In fact, I was, um, 2019, I went, I was in a, in a, in, um, in a country in Greece. Mm -hmm. And I was in a, in a community of Nigerians, and uh, we, were, we were sharing. And uh, somebody asked me, uh, there, was, there, was a lot of, there was a time that, that there was a lot of controversy about uh, scandals in the church. Then somebody asked me, now if uh, Pope Francis uh, allowed a uh, priest to get married, would you get married? I'll tell them that uh, I would continue being a priest, the priesthood I chose. Mm. Because I didn't want to become a priest because I can't be a husband, and I can't get married, mm -hmm. I can't feed a family. It is because there is something I wanted to do for God in a unique way. Okay. So if I was to choose again, I would be a priest again and again, and even in heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow, that's, uh, you know, your smile tells it, you know? <laughs> you know, your smile tells it. And yeah. uh, uh, I mean, let's now go to your online ministry, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is big, you know, um, yeah. and really commendable. Yeah. Now, tell us about your inspiration in terms of when you started. Okay. At what, do you remember at what point you started this online ministry? Was it uh -huh. intentional? Yeah. Was it an accident? How, how did you begin this ministry? Um, let me say that uh, all along I have been a communicator. Mm -hmm. And one of my hobbies is photography, uh, which I have done for a number of years. And uh, I knew that I had a special calling to, to communication uh, in high school, even in, in the seminary for the years I was there. And then after I was ordained in June 11, 2005, uh, the following year, after one year of parish ministry, I was sent to school. And I remember now the, the retired uh, cardinal is the one who came where I was working, in Uthaya Parish. And he told me that uh, we want you to go and study communication. And you know in the Catholic Church, you don't choose what to, what to, to study. Mm -hmm. The church chooses for you. Because it is not I who want to be a journalist. It is if the church needs journalists. Mm -hmm. If the church needs, they said the one who is qualified. That's how I went to school. So I did my first degree in TV production. And I finished, I went back to teaching. And uh, then after that, I went and did my master's in film. And then after that, I later started my PhD mm -hmm. in social transformation. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Those things. So when I was in the Heavy first CV year, for, for the CK, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I was, when I, I was doing my first degree, that is when I sat and I, I decided now it is time to do something in a different way. Mm -hmm. One day I, I was reflecting. I, I write a lot. The prayers are on my pages I write. Mm -hmm. The reflections I write. I and sometimes, write, sometimes I, I wonder whether they are coming from a book. No. Because they are very theological, they are very I, I, intentional. I, 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 you I know. write a mm -hmm. lot. And because my prayers and, and reflections comes from my interaction with the people. Mm. I, I try to be as, as, as much as possible connected to people because our God is an intentional God who deals with particular people who have particular issues mm -hmm. or problems. So I deal with the particular life situations of people. So when I think about them, I come up with a reflection. After a reflection, then I come up with a prayer. And uh, even the, the homilies I preach, all my homilies are written and, and stored. If you mm. ask me, the homily I preached in 2009 in some church in Jurai, I'll go and give you a script. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after that, then, when, then I, I went, I, I, I started on, on Facebook. Facebook was not very old then, 2006. And I remember my brother priests, they, some who were, were very concerned, good friends and who were very close. And the father, please... It's not good for a priest to go to go to Facebook. You know, people are going to people might insult you. You know, you you people might mistake you. Mm -hmm. And I told them that uh, I have a vision. Mm. I am not going to Facebook because everybody is on Facebook. I'm going to Facebook because I want to take the gospel on a higher level. Because one day I was reflecting. That's what I was saying. One week has 168 hours. The, the Saturday contact is two hours at the most. If there is a Jumuiya or the prayer meeting in the week, it can't exceed two hours. 
at most three. Then I said, let us even imagine that uh, the interaction hours are eight. So we have 160 hours in a week. So I was asking, where is my congregation in those 160 hours? Mm -hmm. Then I said, the gospel must go nearer them where I cannot see them. And now my, my, my dream now came. Full I, circle. Na I now must <laughs> preach to these people when <laughs> they are not in church. See. Okay. So mm -hmm. I continued. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there are normally there were, you know, pseudo accounts, people who did all manner of things, and I have withered all that storm. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. Now, in 2000, 2013, Nation Media, uh, the people who are in charge of the, the bureau in Yemen, by then I was teaching, uh, they came to my office and they told me that now the way you, you are ministered is we think there is a better way of doing it. Mm -hmm. You get to so many people. I remember one guy called, uh, I school, Mr. Kanyi, a uh, photojournalist in Nation Media Group. I don't know whether he's still there. Uh, so he's the one who came with a, a team of, I think, three or four in my office. So we talked. And out of that meeting, the same day, I opened a page. Mm -hmm. The same day, the same night. Mm -hmm. So the use, uh, because by the, uh, when, when, you know, when you're teaching, you, ha you have all the time on books and, uh, and uh, computers. So I started my journey then. So 2013, I, um, the month of March, uh, yeah, I started now the, the, the page. Now the page grew mm -hmm. and it has grown. All right, let's stay there uh, because most of the ministers yeah. or pastors and churches have come to discover social media because of the pandemic that we are in. <laughs> and some of them are very happy that the churches have reopened, actually, because yeah, they can now abandon this sophisticated yeah. you know, kind of uh, ministry. Yeah. But long before you know, the pandemic or yeah. there was a lot of popular presence of uh, yeah. ministry in the church, on social media, you yeah. were there. Yeah. Now, I want, to, I want you to, uh, if you can, mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that you can, actually, give us the numbers mm -hmm. in terms of the reach of your ministry, okay. and if possible, also the platforms you're on. Okay, first, um, I am on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I've been on Facebook since 20, 2006. Mm -hmm. I am on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm on WhatsApp. I have, uh, I, I have also um, a website. I have, um, uh, yeah, I have a blog where I do my reflections. And, That's a uh, lot. Yeah. Sounds like a company. Sounds like a <laughs> corporation. You know? And those are things I, I do them with a lot of ease. Wow. So those are what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook, on Facebook, uh, what we call the, the reach of every prayer, every prayer that I have written and prayed, the reflection from January up until today, I have reached um, 88 million people. This, this year? This year only. Not, only from, this year. not, not from 2006? No, no, this year only. <laughs> only this year. It is 88 million. Wow. Only this year. That is Facebook. On YouTube, the people who have been reached 88 by... 88 million? Yes. These people you cannot see. I can't see them. Mm -hmm. Now, out of those, I need to say something about, about Facebook that uh, is also good to, to notice. There's something called weekly impressions. Mm -hmm. Impressions are people in one week who take some time to, to look at what you have. The impressions per week are about 2.4 million. Per week? Per week. 2.4 million? Yeah, per week. Those are people who actually yeah. take some time to study yeah, yeah. and... Mm -hmm. Now, but then there is another, uh, another category. We call them unique people. Unique people on Facebook are people who sit to study your material. Are people who will call me and ask me, Father, where is the reflection? Mm -hmm. So we have got uh, 6.5 million people. They are unique. These are the people who are real. They are not just uh, abstract people. They are real and they follow materials, and they follow Father CK as a person. You know, there are people who follow Father CK mm -hmm. as an abstract being, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, we took about 88 million. Yes, yes. Another number of 2.4 million. Yeah. Those are, those are the weekly, weekly impressions. Whoa. Now, then, and, um, then we have got what? Yeah. Uh, then on YouTube. YouTube, we have the total number of views for the short and long videos and my masses that we have put 
Uh, from January to date, we, have, we, have, we are at 43 million. 43 million? Yes. Now, aren't you a president of something, of uh, an invisible country? Did you know? <laughs> did you know? Mm -hmm. I never get mesmerized by the numbers. Mm. Because my concern is, have I done the right thing? Mm. Am I representing God? Because my, my point is, if I cannot represent God, you know, one of the, 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 the greatest miss of Job mm -hmm. was that he misrepresented God. Mm -hmm. So my point is, eh, because I have always tried as part of my identity to be a priest on social media, you will rarely see even my photos when I'm not uh, critically attired. Mm -hmm because I don't want to send the wrong signal. So my point is, I know there are numbers. I know they are big. We cover 129 countries. 129 in this, in, countries? In this globe. And, Did you uh, say you come the, from a small the village? Great, the greatest, <laughs> the greatest yeah. numbers are in Kenya. Mm -hmm. The second greatest number is Zambia. Mm -hmm. We've got another na greatest number, the third country. The third country is US. The fourth country is India. Amazing. Then we have Namibia. And then we have got the others. <laughs> hey! So those are the persons. So um, mm -hmm. that is the, 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 the reach of the numbers. We have got Instagram. Instagram is at the, uh, we have 872,000. Wow. Okay. Instagram is about two months old. No. I have been a bit reluctant to go to Instagram. <laughs> and are they, and are you, are you are there now, you know? I am there. Yeah, you have, now that you're in these platforms, you have to be everywhere. It is now, true. definitely, you know, and the connection, you see, you're not impressed by the numbers. Yeah. Mm. You're more impressed, you know, you're more concerned about, are you doing the right thing? Exactly. Are you representing God well? Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's an amazing uh, maturity because, mm. um, uh, because many people would actually mm -hmm. talk the numbers, uh -huh. but you're talking the ministry. And in fact, mm -hmm. uh, let me say something very fast. Eh? Mm -hmm. Facebook has something called monetization, mm -hmm. making the page to generate money. I have deliberately turned down mm -hmm. every effort to do adverse on my page. And there have been invitations to do that? From all over. Mm -hmm. I have so many, from, especially from Europe, I have had so many, mm -hmm. very genuine very genuine that uh, father we want we want even those who tell me that we want to place our materials on your page and we'll be paying the, you this money and the monies i'm being offered per week is not less than half a million now let me ask you uh <laughs> father uh father kenya i mean i know that you want to say no yeah. about this but yeah. but think about ministry think about like half a million what you do for the poor what you do for um a scholarship program, what do you do for something like that? Just, that just maybe. True. That mm -hmm. is true. That mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. You know, man, money, money is unique in its own way. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm saying that, I am a trained journalist. And I know that when you, when you are a media house owner, you have no say over the advertisers. Mm -hmm. So the advertisers tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. In fact, advertisers hold captive media houses because they have put their money there. I don't want anybody to tell me that Father, between this hour and this hour, mm -hmm. don't place a prayer because we are selling Nescafe, for example. Because at that point, I will have lost my purpose mm -hmm. of being there. Mm -hmm. Because my primary duty is to minister to people, to set the prayers and... Uh, pastor, duty free, since 2013, duty free on my page. Mm -hmm. I have placed a prayer at 3 a.m., 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 4 p.m., 9 p.m., duty free, whether I am in Kenya or in Europe. Now, um, on a daily basis. Again, <laughs> will we hear you on wanting to be in control of the content yeah, yeah. and what happens in the page. Yeah. Uh, again, which is quite as perspective when you think about it. Yeah. And also given that you know uh, the value and how to monetize. You are a communicator. Yeah. You are a trained communicator. You know the value. Everyone aims at monetizing yeah. and yeah. you have sidestepped that. Yes, now, yes. all this, like, all these prayers and all these postings and, you know, in all these platforms, 
how do you manage that? Do you do other work or is this your full-time engagement? No, 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 no. I am actually... Or do you have a team that, no. you know, <laughs> that does this for you? Let me say this mm -hmm. for purposes of the, the viewer there. Everything you see on Facebook, on YouTube, and Instagram, I do it myself. It has my signature. And if you want it, it is stored somewhere in my hard disks, in my small office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do that work myself. But uh, I am a chaplain of uh, St. Mary's Boys Nyeri. Mm -hmm. It's a great school. I am a chaplain of Sisters of Mary Immaculate Nyeri. Mm -hmm. I am a chaplain of Nyeri National Polytechnic. Plus, I also help the Archbishop in the communication office once in a while. Now, you are a machine. You are a and I am, machine. I am a family therapist mm -hmm. for over 17 years. Wow. That's so, <laughs> I think that's, that should be another uh, talk, topic for another day. How yeah. you're able to combine all these impactful so things. So, my, 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 my work on a daily basis is where the Archbishop has given me a letter of appointment. Mm -hmm. I have three stations. St. Mary's Boys Nyeri, Caesars of Mary Market Nyeri, and uh, Nyeri National Polytechnic. Okay. So, whatever else I do, I, I dedicate hours per day to do my ministry. Mm -hmm. The challenge is one eh, that I'm not able to follow on. Let me, I, let me just show you something. Eh? Mm -hmm. If you come to my... If you look at daily messages, mm -hmm. these are the phone for today. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. day is still young. Eh? Yeah, yeah. So I have received up until now 3,700 messages. Today. Today. These are the messages that are waiting for me to read. Uh, on, on, um, I have uh, on WhatsApp, mm -hmm. I have 4,000 people waiting for me to respond to their messages. Ooh. That is only one number. I mm -hmm. have two lines. So this is the busiest. Mm -hmm. So that's, that becomes a challenge. That's the only area that I, I would confess that uh, it's quite... That feedbacking. Feedback feedbacking. Okay. A huge one. All right. I will I, do. I, mm -hmm. I something that happened yesterday, and it happens almost all the time. Mm -hmm. For the last four or five days, I've been very busy. So I was not able to read messages. So now I get to a message. Uh, Father, can you pray for my husband? Then I am responding. Maybe the, the message came on um, today. Um, the message came maybe, we say, at, uh, four days ago. And then uh, I am picking it. Maybe it's after six days or seven days. Um, oh, thank you. I'm praying for, uh, for him. May God give him a quick recovery. Mm. The next message, uh, Father, my husband died. Oh, ah, yeah. then I feel so bad. Mm, <laughs> mm, mm. Because Some I did not respond immediately. Yes. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is that uh, I can only pick people's phone calls up until 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. But people call me every hour of the day. Mm -hmm. So whether, whether I'm asleep or not, at midnight, at 2 a.m., at 3, people are still calling. But I can't pick because I'm asleep. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, and somebody wants to talk to Father CK mm -hmm. at that hour. It's not even possible. Okay. And uh, I would say that I would feel for them because maybe that is the only hour somebody is, is available. Mm -hmm. I dedicate uh, some hours sometimes uh, in, in a week because of the congregation, the people who are in various countries, especially the Arab people who are in Arab countries, they are able to to communicate on phone after 11.30. Because that's when they have been released by their masters, mm -hmm. maybe to go and sleep. Uh, so once in a while, I'll be able to listen to them. Uh, but it is quite a huge challenge. All right, because now you, you are caught with so much information it is and true. people have trusted you yeah, over yeah. time. It is true. And they feel that they can trust you with yeah. the most intimate of their experiences. Exactly. And uh, now there is a, I'm sure that um, there are ways in which you're trying to you know, to solve that because it's yeah. significant. That it's, feedback it is, is significant. True. It is true. And we hope that you will tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a short break. Yeah. You know, as well as you talk about, you know, the 3,000, 4,000 messages, isn't it interesting, uh, viewer, that we actually reached out to Father Kenya through his Facebook line and he responded. And so the ministry is really uh, effective, <laughs> and that's why he is here. And we will take a short break, and uh, we're talking about uh, the Father Kenya online congregation, a Catholic priest who has taken the online ministry to a whole great place, reaching millions of people every single day. And we will come back and we will be asking him, especially about branding. He comes from a Catholic institution, which is very corporate. How come that he brands uh, his online ministry as a person? Interesting things. Stay with us. This is Spotlight. <laughs>
Again, uh, viewer welcome. Uh, we are talking to Father Charles Kenua uh, from the Kenua Online Congregation. And uh, amazing insights here. And uh, we are going to just ask you again, um, Father Charles Kenua, you are a Catholic priest. Yes, I am. And um, when you go to that space, mm -hmm. the, 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 the online space, mm -hmm. it's definitely a global space. Yeah. So do you target primarily Catholics or who is your target? My target primarily are the people of God. Mm -hmm. Those of you who have been able to visit my page, you realize that uh, it is not 100% Catholic staff. Mm -hmm. Because my, the people I minister to are from all over. I ha, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm afraid to so many sheikhs. Mm -hmm. I, am, I have been journeying in marriages with so many Muslims. Mm -hmm. In fact, even out of the country. Mm -hmm. I have been journeying with so many uh, people in marriage who are in Hinduism. I have so many couples that I journey with, over 45 couples. Uh, That's and, interesting. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and half of them are not even in Kenya. So I minister to everybody because I, I have a belief that um, God is calling each one of us to be intimately and individually connected with him. Mm -hmm. While it is so good to belong to a certain denomination, it is not right to dehumanize one another because I am a Catholic, you are from CITAM, he's from CK or the other one. So my, my perspective is that uh, my ministry is quite inclusive mm -hmm. of everybody who would want to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. And I know we we'll talk about ministers yeah. uh, and the social media space, short, mm -hmm. you know, in a short while, mm -hmm. uh, and about that inc the aspect of in inclusivity. Yeah. Uh, um, but before we go to that, now you are an individual. Yeah. I mean, you are a priest, Catholic priest, of yeah. course. But yeah. we, when we think about the Catholic Church, uh, the perception mm -hmm. is that it's very corporate. Yeah. And very, like, you move by the name of yeah, the block, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. But now here you brand this page, yeah. not uh, under your congregation. You have mm -hmm. a number of institutions that exactly. you can be able to yeah. associate with this page. Yeah. Um, but you go in here as an individual. Yeah. Now, tell us about that. Now, two things. Mm -hmm. One, God does not save congregations. Mm -hmm. God does not save nations. God saves individuals. When God called me, he did not call me as priests. Mm -hmm. He called me as an individual priest. So I will leave my priesthood as an individual under the, the bishop or the archbishops who will always be under me for all the years I'll be a priest on this earth mm -hmm. because I, I did promise my obedience to the bishop and all those who will come. You mean above you, yes. Above you, oh yeah, mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. So whatever I do, I do as Father Charles Kenua. And I won't say this clearly because I would want maybe people who judge us as groups mm -hmm. to know that... It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very yeah. big, uh, it's priest, a very big priest, priest, Priests uh, exist as individuals under various parishes, dioceses, and bishops and archbishops. And this is so good because if Father C.K. messes, Father C.K. does not mess on behalf of other Catholic priests. Mm -hmm. So if it is Father C.K. who is on the wrong, it is Father C.K. who is on the wrong. And that, that is why I said, because this is, I see it as an extension of, of my priesthood ministry. Mm -hmm. So it must be Father C.K. Mm -hmm. That's reason number one. Reason number two, technically, and for purposes of legal purposes, eh, for legal issues, eh, uh, on social media, we don't exist as pseudo-persons or abstract beings. Social media will need a person with a face. And that is why I have put my face on my page, mm -hmm. such that I am answerable to anything that goes on my pages. Mm -hmm. Such that if, they, if they, the government is looking for me, they know who 
to look for. Mm -hmm. And I can confess to you today, I am followed by the government mm -hmm. on daily basis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that mm -hmm. I can tell you. And uh, I am never afraid because I know I don't, I don't do anything wrong. My work is to guide people, to help them to be better than they are. For because of that, I would want to be answerable to the government, to the church, and eventually to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and your, your, your superiors are supportive yes, of this ministry. Actually, mm -hmm. the current Pope is so much into social media and encouraging priests, mm -hmm. priests to, do, to, do, to use social media for purposes of bringing the gospel home. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, you know, you've gone all the way to Rome. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> to just, you know, just authenticate and what you my, my, yes. my current archbishop mm -hmm, also, mm -hmm. uh, Archbishop Anthony Muheria, he is a social media person, so avid and, uh, of course, such a good person, mm -hmm. such, a, such a good communicator, and he also inspires me a lot. Okay, we'll talk about that in yeah. a short while, yeah. especially... Um, the role of the Interfaith Council. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about that uh, mm -hmm. in, a short, in a short while. But let's stay with um, your, uh, your fellow priests mm -hmm. in other denominations yeah. uh, across mm -hmm. this country, across the world. Mm -hmm. Many of them have come into this social media space yeah. because of the pandemic. Yeah. And they have actually immediately left, yeah. you know, <laughs> when now <laughs> the churches me. are reopened because yeah. it was too sophisticated and they didn't think it was holy ground enough. Yeah. Now, for a pastor who is wondering how mm -hmm. to utilize mm -hmm. uh, the social media space mm -hmm. in a way that is effective, mm -hmm. in a way that is also biblically affirming, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, uh, what would you say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, allow me to give some statistics okay. because numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. And I'll do this for purposes of the pastors, the priests, and the others who are ministers to understand the impact that we can have if we were to go online. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, I talk about only Kenya alone, eh? in Kenya, people who use internet are 22 million, okay. 0.28. Mm -hmm. People who use Facebook in Kenya, this is up to, this, uh, this is data of uh, end of January 2020. Mm -hmm. So it's so recent data. It is 8 million, 736,000. Mm -hmm. Facebookers, eight, seven, thirty-six thousand. Active in Kenya, active social media users, active are eight point eight. Active, mm -hmm. eight point eight million. That means we have got quite a good number of others who are not very very active. Let us just work with Facebook only. We forget the others. Now suppose all the pastors and all the priests were to go into cyberspace. And then we say, can we try to change the narrative? Mm -hmm. Okay? And for example, like, like now that we are going to the, an election year, 2022. Mm -hmm. Let's even forget that. Because we cannot be good only when a, a, a nation is coming. We can be good every other time. Being, can we be a, pro, a proactive group of ministers? such that every day we are uploading something positive. Suppose we say that every priest, every pastor, would put only one Bible verse. The whole Bible has 31,000 verses. <laughs> so if we were to do that, eh? and then we see that all the pastors and the priests are within the, the active numbers, so if all of us were to go, and then we rally our congregations, all of us, every day, let us upload something positive. Mm -hmm. Believe me, you. Within a very short period, because social media is so effective, mm. we will have changed the trajectory and the narrative in this country. Mm -hmm. Why are we fighting? Because maybe uh, we have not been able to harmonize what we say face to face and what we say online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, when, I am, when I am ministering to couples, especially couples on Facebook, I tell them, what you cannot tell your husband or your wife face to face, don't put it on Facebook because it is not helping anybody. Mm -hmm. So suppose all the pastors and the priests were to go online and then they take their message on the cyberspace, I tell you, the narrative will change. Mm -hmm. 
You know, Father Kenya, you, as you talk about this, you're looking into space. And you, you know you've seen visions before. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Could be you're just seeing another vision right yeah. here. You know, and uh, that we would put in line with the Great Commission. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you talk about people, you talk about the world, you talk about reaching them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Great Commission is go into the whole world. Exactly. And the world is exactly it's the true. way you've described yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to the whole world. I'll say this with a lot of humility uh, to uh, my, the priests and the pastors and the others, we have become so religious that we have forgotten that you're supposed to be spiritual at the same time. Mm -hmm. And this is where we have to put the distinction between religiosity and spirituality. Because of being so religious, we are so loyal and attached to institutions and persons in contradistinction with being attached and loyal to God. We follow persons than we follow Jesus Christ. We follow what people say than the word of God. Mm -hmm. If we were to vacate, because it is good to be religious, because it is the lower step towards spirituality, the higher realm. If we were all to graduate, we refuse to be here, because when we are here, I'll not serve you because you are a Sitam follower. I'll not follow my sister because she is a PCA follower. If we depart from this platform and then we come to a higher realm, then we will hear the voice of God. Now, I give an example of the woman with the issue of blood. When she touched Jesus, mm. she knew she would get well. But Jesus asked, who has touched me? The men who were in the Father who were surrounding him, the, uh, the, the, the senior priests surrounding Jesus, <laughs> that context, mm -hmm. they did not hear the question mm. because they were on the lower realm. The woman who was on the higher realm had the question because it was not a physical question. It was a spiritual question. Mm -hmm. It is the only person who was on the same realm with Jesus who could hear it. The problem we have today is because we have got our ministers who are still telling Jesus what was Sukumana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you painted the picture of how the impact that the church, the mm -hmm. pastors, mm -hmm. can have through social media. Yeah. Um, and the language of, I mean, the, the, the possibility of changing the narrative. Yeah. And we're going to 2022, mm -hmm. uh, which is an election year. Mm -hmm. Now, already in the day-to-day -day narrative, mm -hmm. there's the mention of hotspots, uh -huh. which itself, you know, begins to start particular mindsets. Sure, sure. Now, again, staying with the church, mm -hmm staying with the pastors, mm -hmm. staying with the online ministry, more mm -hmm. online space. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can envision for us and maybe uh, mobilize the pastors. Many of yeah. them are watching you right now. Yeah. How the social media space can be used to, you know, change the language of hotspots and instead yeah. maybe have another narrative in terms of peace and cohesion. Mm -hmm. When you're driving to Nakuru, there is a, a gate, there is a, a, a signboard of Hell's Gate. Mm -hmm. But there's a, I, I, I think somebody else came with another, another concept. On the other side, there is a place called the Gates of Heaven, mm -hmm. a place where people, I think, go for prayers. On your way to Nakuru, it is somebody who wanted to change the concept of Hell's Gate. If there is the Gates of Hell, we must create Gates of Heaven. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, coming to your question, Politicians and, and security officers, in their own wisdom, they have uh, branded some places hotspots. These are not hotspots for gospel. They aren't hotspots for evangelization or worship, for fighting and killings. Mm -hmm. Suppose we were to change that narrative. Now, let me give a practical example. Now, mm -hmm. um, uh, if since morning, uh, now it's about some about four or a few hours from 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 morning. Mm -hmm. If we were to check, maybe the number of people that uh, that have been able to that I have been able to to reach, mm -hmm. then we we may want to ask if we were to go online, all of us, and just put a prayer 
And then you see that uh, we are doing one prayer, a prayer for peace. We have pastors in every corner of this country. Mm. Uh, I was able to, to put a prayer uh, that was um, when the day was starting and the day started. Uh, that was about six hours ago. Mm -hmm. And this prayer has gone to 8,000 people, 89,591. 89,000. 89,591. Mm -hmm. Suppose uh, Pastor Fori has the same, another pastor in Koibatek, another pastor in some parts of Nyanza, and the places and the credits, Muslim credits mm -hmm. all over the country. Mm -hmm. Suppose every one of us has gotten that, uh, not even 89,000. Mm -hmm. Let's even talk of 5,000 each. And all these people are talking about one thing, mm. peace and cohesion. Today I want to tell the pastors and the priests and the bishops and the ministers listen to me, mm -hmm. we can change this country if we wanted. Mm. We can change. We, if we can be, we be proactive than reactive. Because in Kenya we pray as a nation when we have messed. We don't pray continuously. Mm -hmm. We pray when we have missed. Suppose now we become proactive that every priest, every pastor, every minister, whatever they are, whichever rank, we are doing one thing, bringing our people together. Mm -hmm. We would fight this. Mm. The problem we have, and I don't know how we are going to overcome this, is because some of us are more politicians than we are ministers. <laughs> now, uh, you know, when, when we're in that space, we, we've all been, um, in a way, uh, uh, been blessed by the work yeah. that has been done by the team that was set together, yeah. interreligious team that was yes, set yes, together yes, yes, yes. Uh, to, to help the church, yeah. uh, to be a link with government, you know, yeah. the church and the people in this pandemic season. Yeah. And uh, we've seen you know, some good work they've done. And sure, one of sure. the big things that have come out from that is churches are more united. Exactly. Re religions are more united. They have now a language. Uh -huh. that they, can, they have a space they can meet together. Yeah. And uh, I mean, how, how, would you, how would you see, uh, and this is purely at an idea level, mm -hmm. how that kind of a body mm -hmm. can be able to go in towards the election year, mm -hmm. use the idea that you have yeah. uh, of mobilizing, you know, the, the faith movement yeah. towards... Uh, sending messages and prayers of peace yeah. to distort this hotspot, violent kind of language? Mm -hmm. One, it is very possible. Mm -hmm. It is doable. As you have put it so very well, we have seen it happen with the team that was put together by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm humbly and uh, admitting that it was led by my archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> and they have mm -hmm. done quite a commendable job. Suppose this was to go beyond the pandemic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. such that we are not doing this because we were in some crisis, but we do it because it's, it's, it's our design to bring people together, such that churches for the first time start reading from the same script mm. and using the same voice. Then we would, in less than a year, mm. change the hotspots to become are uh, havens of peace. Mm, peace spots. You know? I, uh, peace spots. In fact, we can change them from, from hot, hot spots, spots to, to peace, peace spots. spots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we, and we mm -hmm. can do that. And isn't that the calling of the church? It is for sure. And the word you've used here mm -hmm. was be proactive. Exactly. Not just read the newspaper, shake our heads, you know, yeah, yeah. and say, wow, there we go again. As a priest, and especially with that kind of space that is, can be mobilized, towards uh, the work that you've talked about, I mean, it's really possible. It's and really you know, possible. we, we mm -hmm. as priests and pastors, we should take pride with this fact that our people really respect their ministers mm -hmm. and they listen to them. That means if all of us were to be peace ambassadors from the heart, mm -hmm. not mouth, from the heart that we become peace ambassadors, wherever we have those men and women mm -hmm. in this country, that all of us are speaking one language. Mm -hmm. There would never be hotspots. We would be saying that uh, Kenya is a country strewn with the peace spots. Mm -hmm. And who are the people? <laughs> the people who are the muters and the drivers are the ministers. Mm -hmm. It can happen. And, uh, Dear pastors, 
dear priests, our bishops and others, mm. let's do it. It is possible. All right. Now, that, we're talking about that possibility. Uh -huh. Now, when you, I know that you have been in this space for a long time, yeah. the online ministry, and you have yeah. really believed in it. Yeah. And you've worked, you've invested a lot of time, yeah. a lot of resources towards it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe you can pick out for us, we've seen mm -hmm. the possibilities that you've mm -hmm. just talked about, mm -hmm. but maybe you can pick out for us um, maybe one incident that really you can say in my online ministry, I really, really remember this one. Uh, maybe you have more than one. Or maybe you could even have a hundred, but, but we're, just, <laughs> we're just picking one that you can yeah, say the, this the, is the, really the, memorable. There is a, mm -hmm. there is a child... There is a child that uh, I'm seeing many because I, in terms of helping people who have medical issues, I, I have been able to help support a number of people. Mm. But I remember there was, a, there, was, there was a child who was to go for, for operation. And uh, the family didn't have the money. They came to my office and told me that, Father, this is where we are. We have nothing. Mm. And when people come to me with that, I only ask them, give me some nice photos of the child. Mm. If the child has to both the parents, if there's a, if the, if the child, the phone number of the mother and the father, your ID numbers, and a pay bill number. And then I do uh, some short um, narration, and then I throw it. Mm. And such that, uh, and I tell them that uh, uh, once you get whatever it is that you get, kindly let me know uh, that you got helped and that things are working. Mm. So I have heard that um, the, the, they needed about, about two million. Mm -hmm. And when they came to me, they had some, I think, 700,000. And we were able to get for them in less than a month over 1.4 million. Mm. That's mm. the money and then the child. I'm saying that because I have had like eight incidences okay. where we raised a lot of money. Mm -hmm. The money never came to me I, because I don't like it that way. The only one time I, a case I, the money was sent to me is a case that was in a Kasarani. Uh, in the, in the, there's a, some hospital there. Mm -hmm. A lady who was stuck in hospital and she needed a 250,000. But then I was working in radio which we raised in 28 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get out of hospital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, those changing lives. Changing lives. The online ministry changing lives yes, in yes, real yes, ways. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So those are the, the, I have no those physical cases. Mm -hmm. I have got thousands of others, people who have, who have been touched by the work that I do and that we have been able to bring so many families together by our, because I do a lot of family ministry, actually, it is the reason for which I am on, on, on cyberspace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, um, it's been said by some analysts mm -hmm. that the future, well, what will make the difference between mm -hmm. uh, an impactful church and a not so impactful church mm -hmm. going forward mm -hmm. is their online presence. What do you say about that? You know, I always say that Corona was a blessing in these guys. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's like we didn't learn the lesson so very well. Because Corona taught us that we can stay at home and follow mass. We can stay at home and uh, do our worship via whichever platform that we choose, whether Zoom or mention them. And I was so happy. And I can, again, without of humility, say that I, I journeyed with so many churches mm -hmm. in various dioceses in this country tend to put, um, to put in shape their online work. And uh, I would do this because I knew how impactful it is. And I believe from the depth of my heart, mm -hmm. if we are not on cyberspace, we cannot exist for long. Mm -hmm. Because um, today we have got so many people. If actually we have 22 million people who are now using internet, it tells you that uh, at home you can sit and write a homily, and then you said it. Uh, that means that uh, the future of our churches as, as we are, it is in the cyberspace. Mm -hmm. So I think it is time now to rethink. Mm -hmm. we, what we need is a paradigm shift. The way we look at ministry, the way we look at the gospel. And the number three, the most important part, is the quality of training of our ministers. Because again, to remain relevant on social media, 
you must be a good researcher mm. and a good reader because you have to read and read and read and read and research. So we also may be moving forward. We will also think about how we train our ministers. Because if we have got 8 million and 700,000 Kenyans who are Facebookers, one thing, it is not possible to be on Facebook when you are 100% illiterate. So that means that mm -hmm. the 8 million have some basic form of education. Okay. And they are our congregants. Mm -hmm. That means we cannot take them for granted. It is very possible when people are coming to the church, they have listened to another, other online homilies. Well, it's, it's actually sometimes as dramatic as <laughs> if um, you are the minister there yeah. and it seems that you've lost me in this physical space. <laughs> I'm sitting in the congregation, but I'm listening to somebody else. Exactly. Right here <laughs> in this space. <laughs> you know, and uh, when we are at that, uh, there's... You know, talking about literacy and all that. Let's yeah. think about the congregation a little yeah. bit because sometimes the online space has mm -hmm. been associated more mm -hmm. with the young people yeah. and yeah. Uh, with the younger generation. Uh, but there's a whole uh, population mm -hmm. of uh, what you can say people, either because of their environment mm -hmm. um, or because of their economic status mm -hmm. or because of their age, mm -hmm. may not be too quickly able to access mm -hmm. this space where the church is going into. Yeah. Uh, how do we make sure that no one is left behind? Now, that's very, very good. Uh, one is how we prepare our message. Mm -hmm. Because I, I told you that I preach to young people. I, I have three congregations that are unique in their own ways. Mm. The first congregation I preach to are the sisters. These are religious women, well educated and they know God mm -hmm. through and through. So, the homily, uh, my homily for them is unique for them. Mm. From there, I drive to Nyeri, St. Mary's boys. These are boys below 16 years, maybe the oldest 17 at form 4. These boys, they would want a Jesus who understood their world. So their homily is for them. From there, I drive to college, Nyeri National Polytechnic. These are mature men and women. There are a number of them above 20. We still have a few below 20. But they're in college. Their worldview is also different. So when I sit down every Sunday to prepare my homilies, which I prepare seven days before, I'm preparing for homilies. I'm preparing a homily for boys, for sisters, for college students, and I'm preparing a homily for the, for the, where, for the world, the one that will go online. Mm -hmm which has to touch what is happening across the world. So, because I, I can't preach online as if I'm preaching to boys in St. Mary's Boys. So, the challenge is how we, we, we package our message. Mm -hmm. That's number one, how we package our message. Then, number two, we also need to know who and who is on Facebook, mm -hmm. who is on Instagram. For example, statistically, most young people in Nairobi are in Instagram. When you get out of Nairobi, most young people are on Facebook. So a pastor in Nairobi who, who need to get the young people must be on Instagram. There is no way about that. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, there are a few others on, on Facebook. Pastors who are outside Nairobi must embrace Facebook. Uh, so what we need to do is that we need some very clear statistics mm -hmm. to know who is where. Who are the ages that are on, that are on, um, on Facebook, mm -hmm. the ages that are on Instagram, mm -hmm. those who are there, and the other one. And then we, we know that um, when we are going online, again, the way we code our message mm -hmm. is also different. Mm -hmm. Because we want to ask, because I... I, I I'm so always well guided by Pope Francis' call to make the gospel interesting. Mm. So if I have to make the gospel interesting, and it is in an abstract format, because when I'm putting something on Facebook, you know I'm not there to shout it out. But somebody must come and read with the tone with which I wrote it with. Mm. So the coding is very important. And knowing this message 
is going to a number of people. For example, if you're on Facebook, you need to be attentive to the following hours, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. There's a very active followers there. Then from there, the F Facebook becomes very active after 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Up, up until 10.30. From there, it goes down. Then from there, it wakes up a bit around 3 p.m. up to 5. And then, interestingly, again, it wakes up at, after 10.30. So that means mm -hmm. if you are doing online ministry, again, the timing of the message. Mm -hmm. If you have such a very important message, unless you have a congregation that follows you one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. and then you put it at the midday, chances are it will not be seen. Okay. Yeah, that, <laughs> that information is very important. If you put it yeah. at 7.30 or 8 a.m., mm -hmm. chances are nobody will see it. Mm -hmm. Especially if, if you're in Nairobi, because that is the time that people are you know, going to the office, yeah. there is jam, there is this and that. Mm -hmm. And then from there, now they start settling down. Okay. So we, we need to to have that information, mm -hmm. who is the statistics are very important. Okay. We cannot go online if we do not have some, some statistical knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's why I said that uh, we also need to have, to, some, to have some good researchers. Mm -hmm. If it is a church like this, we may have our researchers because our churches have professors, mm -hmm. have men and women who are very well academically exposed. So we can be able to have, we can be, even be having um, a board that uh, helps us to to craft the online message. Mm -hmm. And these professors who teach in our various universities and colleges are in our congregations. Long are the times that we use to see congregations are a group, as a group of people who have never seen books, mm. let alone read, reading one. So they are well academically exposed. Okay. We can engage them. All right. Um, clearly, I hear your optimism that yeah. there's space for everyone. Whether everyone. you're in the city, or in the country. It is true. There's a space for everyone. Yeah. Uh, Reverend Father Kenyo, it's been very insightful. Thank you. Having this conversation. <laughs> and uh, clearly, you're doing an exemplary work. Thank and uh, it's my prayer that as many people as have heard you, mm -hmm. that they will get into this, they will invest quickly into this uh, online space yeah. than they have had before. Thank you. And uh, so may God bless you as you continue to do this great work. Thank you. You keep growing, you know, both in reach and also in content. For the greater glory of God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, viewer. <laughs> we've been talking to uh, Reverend Father Charles Kenua, who is uh, the one behind the huge Father Kenua online church, online congregation. And we are glad for the inspirations we've received. And it's clear that the way forward for the church is online. Let's get there. Let's change the world through this space. Let's even change the narrative in our country right now through this space. This has been Spotlight. Thank you for watching.